In this video, I'll be demonstrating a ferrofluid check valve. An ideal check valve will only allow fluid or air to pass in one direction but not the other. When pressure is applied, it will eventually reach a critical point called cracking pressure. This is the first indication that flow is occurring. The ideal check valve, which is physically impossible to reach, will require low to no pressure in the direction you want flow to occur and infinitely high in the direction you don't want flow to occur. However, really, the best check valve is one that can suit your needs, whether you're working on microfluidics like organ on a chip experiments or on more industrial levels like reservoirs. Because we're creating a check valve with only ferrofluid, magnets, and a specifically designed channel, it will be imperfect, but proves a concept that a pressure differential can be created with only these tools. This is our setup. First thing is a model with the ferrofluid already inside. Our manometer, which will take our readings, a pressurizing syringe, which will apply pressure, a three-way valve that connects the manometer to the tube from the syringe to the model, and our two tubes on both sides connected to the model through a lure. So this is the model that I created from SOLIDWORKS. You can see at the bottom there is a place where I can put the magnet. On the sides, I've also put some lure connections for a more secure connection, hopefully airtight. And at the top, that channel I just pointed at is two millimeters wide and two millimeters deep. Here I'm injecting the ferrofluid into the model using a syringe. You can see the magnet on the bottom is pulling the ferrofluid into the center, which is really neat. We started with about 0.6 milliliters, ended with 0.4, so inside the model there is 0.2 milliliters. I made sure when injecting the fluid into the model that it touched the top of the model to create an airtight seal. The manometer currently reads 2 millimeters of mercury, so we need to subtract that from our final value. We're only using one magnet and the air is being pushed from the right side to the left side. As you can see, the ferro fluid is moving through that channel. Our sustainable pressure reads 43, so the final value is 41. Now we're pushing fluid from the left side to the right side. We start with 2 and with 10, so our cracking pressure here is 8 millimeters of mercury. Now we're using two magnets. We're pushing air from the right to the left, and we end with a sustainable pressure of 133. So the final value is 131. At the end, you'll see a rather large blowout. This one took a few tries, but we put the manometer to read at its max value, and our max value ends up being 66, subtracting 2, so our cracking pressure is 64. So for our final values, our pressure differential for one magnet is 33 millimeters of mercury, and for two magnets, it's 67 millimeters of mercury. What's interesting, though, is the difference between the ratios of one magnet versus two magnets. For one, we get a 1 to 5 ratio, and for two, we we'd get only 1 to 2. This can be explained by how two magnets behave when interacting with each other. During the experiment, we noticed something interesting. When collecting the ferrofluid back into the center of the model, we noticed that the fluid further out from the two magnets remained, while the fluid closer to the magnets returned to the center. When we removed the top magnet, the fluid that was stationary started to come back. This may explain the different ratios. When two magnets are put together, the field lines in the center become stronger and the lines farther out become weaker relatively. It's best described as if the field lines become more concentrated at the center, creating a more sudden drop off of magnet strength when moving away. So when the top magnet was removed, the bottom magnet field lines fanned back out, creating a smoother drop off, although weaker. So when looking at these results with one magnet, the ratio is higher because the ferrofluid is still being held towards the center at a greater distance, whereas with two magnets, the fluid is less magnetized after it crosses past the concentration of field lines. While the absolute values with two magnets is greater due to strength, the ratio is better with one magnet as it has a stronger pull at a greater distance. So the significance of an experiment such as this is the absence of moving parts. Historically, check valves are created using a mechanism such as flaps or springs, acting as a closing gate, which wears out over time. 
This design does not require moving parts and could have an increased longevity. Also, designs like this one are easier to manufacture on a chip as opposed to those with moving mechanical parts. This is a simple design that showcases a pressure differential. However, this could be optimized if parameters like magnet strength, shape, size, and design of the channel itself were adjusted.